Hey guys, what's up? First, I want to wish you all a happy Valentine's Day. Um, just want to get a quick uh, Nor blog out here. Uh, first of all, I want you guys to um, submit your questions, if you have any for me, in the comment section below and submit for your Ask Norb questions. Um, I got a few of them from you guys last time, but I'm gonna, in my upcoming blog, I'm gonna do another Ask Norb and overdue for doing that for a while. So send in your questions down below. Like I said, anything, uh, anything you wanna ask me, football or non-football, all right? So foot, the Super Bowl's over, all that stuff is uh, behind us now, time to move forward into 2016. And so I um, just wanted to kind of throw a little something to think about as uh, we approach the free agency period, which uh, happens next month. So a quick overview. Um, we have 16 unrefri un unrestricted free agents, uh, which means that these guys are free to sign with any team they want. Basically, Seattle's only way of keeping them is to try to offer them a better deal and they'll get somewhere else. So here are all the 16 unrestricted, un can't say the word today, unrestricted free agents. Jeremy Lane, Anthony McCoy, Demarcus Dobbs, Lemieux Jean-Pierre, Will Tukuafu, Chase Kaufman, J.R. Sweezy, Mike Morgan, DeForest Jackson, Fred Jackson, Bryce Brown, John Ryan, Brandon Meebane, Jermaine Kearse, Athiba Rubin, and Russell Okung. So obviously we are not going to be able to keep everybody, so some people are going to be leaving. And obviously there's some staple names here who have been with us since uh, uh, our Super Bowl run and then some that are gonna be probably leaving. Uh, anything can happen, but uh, for me, these are the, the guys who I feel that we should try to make an effort to keep. Uh, Jeremy Lane at cornerback. Uh, I just think he's, ever since he's come back, um, it's strengthened up our, our secondary. He made some great plays during uh, the playoffs, particularly against uh, the Vikings. And uh, I think if he can stay healthy, um, he can keep, he can help solidify that uh, back end, and uh, hopefully not command too much of a price to keep him around, considering he came off of a practically year-long injury. So that's Jeremy Lane's one, and then offensive line. This is one obviously we've all talked about. We need to improve in that area, but at the same time, we can't just blow up the whole thing and start from scratch. So J.R. Sweezy is one that. I think uh, I, I don't. I think it's going to be a hard time keeping Sweezy and Russell Okung. I can't see him signing both. So I feel like if you're going to have one, you try to keep the other. So if we can't keep Okung, then I'd say we make an effort to keep Jr. Sweezy. If we don't sign Sweezy, then we got to keep uh, Okung. Okung's a funny one because we all know he's not the he, he's no, um, he's not the best left tackle in the world. He's no Walter Jones, but he does bring a certain uh, solidness to the left side of the line. And while he has a share of injuries and false starts, um, you kind of also know you can count on him for doing what we have been used to seeing from him. And uh, we let him go. It's, you know, it's, it's that left tackle. It's like, well, what can we get in this place? Can you get a rookie in there? You're going to try to hopefully pick up somebody from free agency. The problem is all the good left tackles are gone, are usually taken, and usually cost a lot. So what are you going to do in this place? Experiment with moving somebody else there? Gary Gilliam, perhaps, the left tackle? But what if that doesn't work out? And then one hit on Russell. And so I don't know if you want to mess around with that. But Okung maybe just Pete may end up being too expensive to keep so we'll see um, I think we should keep uh, John Ryan I know it's a punter we don't really get too hung up about kickers and stuff but I always like the guy as long as he doesn't try running too many you know fake kicks or uh, like he did in uh, against the Vikings but he's always been solid and he's also a good holder so I uh, hope we keep him uh, and then Jermaine curse another tough one I feel like we will end up keeping him um, just because of how clutch he has been and I just don't see him getting that great of a deal from another, another team. I feel like it, Seattle will be able to afford to keep him around so I hope they do. 
um, and uh, you know, we'll see what else uh, happens there. I, I do have, um, well it's not really a, a free agency issue, um, we all know that uh, Ricardo Lockett got lost to the injury in Dallas earlier in the year and from sources close to the Lockett family, he very well, very well may be done playing football. So sad to say, because he was a great player, a great special teams guy, and had a lot of upside still, and um, he may be done. So, you know, so Seattle's gonna be continuing to boost up their receiving core. And so speaking of, moving on to a couple of free agents, or, uh, yeah, free agent pickups they made already in this offseason. They signed uh, wide receiver Jeff Fuller, uh, a tall receiver, six foot four, two hundred twenty-three pounds, out of Texas A&M. He was draft, uh, undrafted free agent uh, with the Dolphins. They played on his practice squad, and then he played three seasons with the Canadian Football League with the Calgary Stampeders, and uh, they picked him up. So it reminds, it reminds me a lot of the Chris Matthews signing, which, as you know, the first year we used him. Well, actually, the first time we brought him into the postseason uh, last year did very well. Unfortunately, it didn't stick around, but uh, he could be one of those, you know, how Seattle likes their big, big, long guys. So he could be another uh, one, another Chris Matthews type, and maybe he can do a little bit more than he did. We also picked up another Canadian product, uh, running back Cameron Marshall, who was also with uh, the Dolphins. Uh, undrafted free agent from Arizona State, 5'10", 211 pounds, played with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and uh, they brought him in to compete at running back. So, uh, obviously with Lynch likely, well, at this point, retiring and leaving the spots open for, for uh, Thomas Rawls, Kristen Michael, and, uh, and who, who else knows with who's going to keep compete with those guys, but obviously brought him in for some depth and competition at the position. So, um, another running back we may want to consider is on the free agent side, uh, Chicago's, Chicago Bears released Matt Forte, who uh, I think still has a few good years left uh, in the tank. Uh, pretty quick hole, uh, hitting the hole running back was really the strength of of the, the of their team for a while when they when they had their when their quarterback Jay Cutler was down, um, that might be worth checking out. So we'll see if Seattle takes an interest in uh, in Forte. Uh, some final last things of interest. Um, these guys keep an eye on the situation uh, with Cam Chancellor and Michael Bennett. Both of them are still under contract, but as you know, both are not happy with their salary situations. You know, are these guys going to hold out? They very likely could, and yet at the same time, the Seahawks are really not in a position to renegotiate with them, as they still both have two years remaining on their deals, and they typically don't renegotiate team uh, with players when they have two years or more left on their deals. And yet, both, particularly Michael Bennett, is is definitely underpaid at his position, and uh, Cam, well. Uh, I still uh, still love the guy, and I still want to see him there at strong safety. But considering that he did the holdout last year, um, you know, so ever since he came back, he was not the same guy that he was the year before. So he probably does not have the same leverage or bargaining power that he had before. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And maybe he maybe he just plays his, his this year, and then next year, you know, if he has a a, a, a kick butt year. Uh, then he's going to be able to command a, a much higher uh, deal, either in free agency or um, or Seattle wanting to uh, sign up, uh, re-sign him to uh, a longer term deal. So we'll see. But the Michael Bennett one is definitely interesting because he certainly has outplayed his contract, but it's a contract he's still under. So will his wife let him hold out this year? That's the big question. All right. Um, I guess that's it for now. Hope you guys have a nice uh, romantic Valentine's Day today for those of you who are in those situations. And um, we'll be in touch. Don't forget to submit your questions. Ask, ask Norb on the comments. And uh, that's it. Please subscribe, keep watching, and go Hawks.